Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this tutorial we look at the function that you should be using and know when it comes to summing your data. Previously we've looked at other functions available in Excel more readily known such as the sum, sum if and sum ifs. So they all have their particular uses when it comes to just getting an overall total, adding some criteria or even adding multiple criteria. The reason we are so focused on this function in particular, and that is called dsum for your reference, is because this allows us to easily uh, apply potentially complex or um, maybe extensive criteria to the function, and it also gives us the ability to quickly change between different criteria, especially when we're trying to study and initially examine a, a data set. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the data that we have available to us here in columns A through to E uh, regarding uh, total revenue for um, some information here. And we'll call it uh, information for maybe a delivery company. So that delivery company is split into regions. So we've got east, west, north and south. They've got various uh, vehicle types of car, van and bike. And we can see that we've got the number of deliveries each has done, the distance in miles and then the total revenue. Okay, so this is just the data we're going to be using. Uh, we haven't put too much uh, thought into obviously what the data is telling us, but hopefully this will help explain the multiple criteria aspect of this function. So uh, dsum is a database function in Excel. So it is slightly different to other functions that you would have seen. What that means is we need to uh, basically insert, not insert, but we need to input into the function uh, a database, or it'll be one of the references we have. And for us, the database is simply this table that we have here, um, going from column A to E. So when we're talking about databases, rather than columns, we're calling each column a field, because this is one of the fields within our databases. And then rows are actually records. Not that terminology really needs to be um, to thought of when we're going into this function, but just for your reference, that's how we refer to uh, the data when it's in a database format. So we've got fields instead of columns and records instead of rows. Okay, so how does the function work? Well, we need to enter some various information in here and it might just be easier to step through the function uh, and we can get to it as we um, get to each step as we come across it. So as you'd have seen with some and or more particularly some if and some ifs, you have to first enter the range or uh, that contains uh, criteria or the or the values in that range that you want to apply criteria to, and then you have to state the criteria you want to apply to it. When it comes to doing some ifs, so with multiple criteria, your formula can come rather extensive because obviously for each new piece of criteria, you've got to add uh, obviously that piece of criteria and obviously that can make the this, um, the formula actually quite difficult to read and obviously really extensive especially if you've got different um, variations you want to do such as less than this greater than that or so on and so forth but when it comes to using dsum or database functions we're actually a lot simpler in that we can all we need to do really is select a number of ranges uh, and it will do the work for us so what we need to do is a quick bit of setup uh, and then we can start entering the function so what I'm going to do is we want to copy all of these uh, fields because obviously we're not calling them columns. So we're just going to copy that and we're going to paste them over here into column H. And there you go, you can see them now added into there. Cool and perfect, and it still fits on the screen, great. So we are going to be using this range here to help define um, the criteria we wish to apply to our um, to the sum we want to achieve. So these are going to be sort of a criteria heading, should we call them here. And then what we'll do is we'll put in here uh, result. And this is where we're actually put into, uh, put our actual function in to give us the result. And what we'll just do, just to tidy this up, let's put the yellow there. Let's get one of these, just to change the formatting, just so it all looks um, a bit easier on the eye to read and when we're referencing it as well. I'm just going to change that yellow as well. So our actual function is going to be entered here into this yellow cell. So the first thing we need to do uh, is enter our function, obviously. So we do equals and then we do d sum and open our brackets. Oh, actually, if I go back there, you can see if we look at the prompt we first get. So it adds the numbers in the field column of records in the database that match the conditions you specify. So it might sound a bit of waffle, uh, but nonetheless, we'll press on and do the open brackets. And you can see there's actually only three 
pieces of uh, criteria, not criteria, but three arguments we need to enter into this function. Uh, and this is where obviously it makes it a lot easier to deal with because even though we're going to apply multiple pieces of criteria to this, we, we still only need those three uh, sections to the function that you see. So the first we have is database. So simply put, database for us is just this range or this complete table we have here what contains our fields and records. So all you need to do is just select all your data like I've done so there. And for us, we've got a bit of a smaller data set you could say, but obviously you might have a lot more rows or records in your data set and therefore you need to have a bigger range than we're defined here. So once we've done that, we can do comma. So the field aspect now, so this is the field in which we want to sum or more uh, another way of wording it is what column in this data of A to E do we want to sum to get our total and for us that's going to be total revenue. So we have two options here, we can either within quotations type into here total revenue or we can actually just reference uh, the cell that actually contains that field name. And the most important aspect of here is just capturing in this field uh, section here, what is the name of the field or the column header, if you're still needing to focus on columns, what is the column header or field name that you want to sum. So what I'm going to do is just type it in here, uh, just because it might be a bit easier when you're looking at the screen and looking back in a second or two, just to remember what it's doing. So basically put is just type in the field name, making sure to use your quotations, uh, but actually you could just select the, um, the cell reference, so you could just put E1 in here rather than the total revenue. Cool, so once you've added that, the field that you want to sum, you've got to do one more comma. And then the last piece we need to do is enter the criteria. So for us, our criteria, we're going to say is in, is all this information over here. So at the moment you will see that uh, row number two is just blank information. Not to worry, but just make sure that when you do this second range here for criteria, you, you include the first row being the row that contains all of the fields, and the second part is um, where the criteria is contained. And once you've done that, all you need to do is close your brackets and hit enter. And you can see straight away it's given us a total. And if I just add a basic sum function at the bottom here and select all of this information in total revenue, you can see what that total is. And that is matching exactly what we have here, the result. And that's because we've not defined any criteria to apply. So what the function is going to do is just sum the total regardless of any criteria. But this is where we can now have some fun and it comes particularly useful. So let's say we now decide, okay, we've got our total at what 1.5 million just over. We only want to look at east. So all we need to do now is in our criteria here is type east. And straight away the result updates and you can see that it's now telling us the total of 567,000. And that's because it's applying the criteria of only summing uh, the total revenue for the region of east. What we can also do is say in vehicle type we now actually want to do, I don't know, let's only look at car. So we can type in car and you can see it's been further filtered to only now give us the total for where the region is east and the vehicle type is car. And we can go on, we can actually do multiple things. We can say where deliveries are greater than, let's say greater than 23. So what we need to do is a greater than symbol, the number 23. Ah, and in this instance, you can see that our result is zero. So if we just look through the data and just see if we can validate it. So we're looking for the east region, vehicle type car, and greater than 23. So we can see we have car, and what would be easier is if we just add our filters on here, and then we can filter it and see what we're doing. So vehicle type is car. We only want ones greater than 23, so that would be 25. Ah, so we can see that there is no, um, there isn't, this criteria doesn't apply to our data in, in other sense. So there is no uh, east region with a car that has greater than 23. So I think it was north. So if we just change this to north, you can see we've now got a value. So if we go to east, back to where we were, 23, not working. Um, so let's say greater than, greater than 20, is that gonna work for us? No, there's all very low ones in the east, but you get the idea that you can then soon play with this to get an idea of obviously uh, the different criteria you can apply. So let's maybe get rid of that one for the time being, that's causing a bit of a problem. Uh, distance could be the same thing as well, so we can now enter into this distance. So maybe you could do east car, what have we got? We've got a van, 
Yeah. So with that, yeah, so you can basically see you can apply all these different criteria into the data. So okay, we've added one piece of criteria. So that be oh, and we just know so we've copied total revenue over here. You don't actually need that because we're not going to apply any logic to total revenue. It'd just be these four columns here. So like distance and miles. And let's just play around with these because it is um, wanting to show you an example. So if I get rid of those two, if you wanted to do greater than, what we're able to do is all you've got to do is the greater than symbols we touched on and enter the numbers uh, that you would like. And the same for uh, distance, if you want to greater than a certain distance traveled, let's say you want to look at anything over uh, 100, greater than 100, you can see that that's how you need to enter them in. Okay, so we've looked at how we can add, okay, multiple criteria in terms of we're looking at more than one field that we wish to apply criteria to. But what if we want to apply more than one piece of criteria to each field? So the first thing I'm going to do is just remove this criteria we had in here. So we can just do that by clearing contents. And you can see that we're now back to looking at the uh, overall data. Um, and what we then need to do here is expand our range. So at the moment you can see, if I go into the formula, that we're selected in from H1 to K2. So that's where it contain all of our information. So what we want to do is, and what we'll do, is just get rid of these two information pieces of information over here and because this is probably worth noting on as well it's the first instance i just copied all of our column headers uh or should i say fields uh over to um this row number one from h through to k you don't actually need to copy them over especially if you don't have any uh, criteria which to require to that field so for this next example what i'm going to do is only include the field if you want to apply criteria to it so for this one, this example, in this region, we want to now, rather than just doing a single region, we want to say, let's look at east and west. We only want to get east and west together. So let's go east and let's do west in here as well. Cool. So at the moment, our formula uh, or our function is only looking at uh, row one. So what I want to do is just update that range at the end here. So where it comes to criteria. So you can see it now includes uh, the region being the field and then the two pieces of information the east and the west wish to apply so if you enter you can see it's now going to give us a total for east and west combined so now we can soon uh, update that as well so again if we wanted now to apply more criteria we could expand this down and then all we need to do oh, we've gone too far uh, but if we wanted to be more we can now include north into this as well and then all we need to do is expand our range to also include north into there. And you can see that's what it's done. So obviously the more we add in here, the more that number is now going to build up. But if we don't want north on there as well, we can just take that out and update the range at which we're looking at. So you can see just like that. And that's a really simple way we can do multiple criteria. So another one we might want to do is in here, we might then want to say uh, vehicle type. So I'm just going to type it in this time. And let's say we only are interested in uh, a van for east and west. So all we just need to do again, once again, just update our criteria range to like that. And you can see it's now going to apply that. So it's going to say, what is the total uh, revenue for the regions of east and west, but only focusing on the vehicle type of van? And it's as simple as that to use. And you can obviously expand that to as many fields as you have and as many pieces of criteria that you want to include as well. So one last thing I want to touch on, because I should have done it at the beginning, uh, is I'm just going to update our range here. And let's just focus on region again, just with one piece of criteria. I'm going to remove vehicle type. So let's go clear content and also going to remove west. So at the moment, we're focusing on region of east. So all we're totaling up is the total revenue for the region of east. And as we know, if we get rid of East there, it's just going to give us our overall number because no criteria has been applied. So what we can do here as well is we can exclude values. So let's say we wanted to get the total revenue, but excluding East. Easy to do. All we need to do is do our little exclude sign uh, and what is com combining the greater than and the less than symbols. So the first one is the less than symbol. Uh, so hold down shift and the comma on your keyboard, followed by the greater than symbol was that achieved by holding down shift and the greater than symbol. All you now need to do is type east or whatever value you wish to uh, exclude and hit enter. And you can see now our total is updated to give the total revenue but excluding that region of East. And this applies to any other field you've got, obviously region is just the one in our example.
So we hope that uh, tutorial, uh, most importantly, made sense and was clear for you to understand. You might want to uh, replay this tutorial another time just to familiarize yourself with the logic required to, um, to apply to this function. And as always, it probably might be beneficial just to start off with applying one piece of criteria in terms of um, just doing uh, one piece of criteria which applies to each field. So you might want to do multiple fields, but just one piece, because that can be a, a better way to start getting your understanding and then you can build on it from there. Uh, if you do have any questions at all and, and do anticipate there might be some questions, feel free to drop us a comment below this video or reach out to us on our social links. So we've got Instagram and Facebook in the uh, or links to those pages uh, in the description to this video. Alternatively, you'll also find a link to our website and you can drop us an email if you find that easier. If you haven't done already, we would really appreciate it if you do subscribe to the channel uh, make sure to hit that bell notification button so that you are notified every time our new videos do come out. And lastly, it'd be greatly appreciated if you did enjoy this video that you give the video a great big thumbs up just to let us know that you did like the content and to do more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video.